You started already? Uh, no. Uh, definitely not. Hey everybody, this is Randy Santel and this is our second nutrition focused video. Thank you so much to everyone who watched the first one and then thank you to everyone who watched last week's Subway Challenge video. Well, today we're going to talk about three more concepts and ideas related to mindset and the thought processes that I use when I am losing weight after my tours and everything like that and then you'll be able to use them and adapt them into your own life to help you achieve your physique goals. But these three things are all going to be centered around the thought processes behind I live to eat. I wear this shirt a lot in my food challenge videos. I definitely believe in it. So without further ado, let's get into those three things starting with a general idea of what I'm thinking or what the thought processes behind I live to eat are. A lot of people think that this is more of a lifting shirt and yes, of course it is a lifting shirt, but it is not a fitness oriented shirt. I played all kinds of sports growing up and I even played college football for three years at Missouri State University where I'm going back to school now, but this slogan, I live to eat, it goes along the same lines as all the others regarding I run to eat, I cycle to eat, I swim to eat, I do whatever to eat. It all uses the same basic thought processes which are basically that we are always in full control of what we eat. You're always in full control of what goes in your mouth, whether it be liquids or foods or whatever. You're always in full control of that, but you're not always in full control of the amount of calories that you burn off. There are all kinds of variables for people related to their basal metabolic rate, their physical activity level, the exercises that, that they do, and really it all kind of depends on the individual and their physique goals. But the primary thing being focused on is nutrition. The secondary thing that allows for an adjustment of the primary is the fitness. So I'm always controlling what I eat, making sure that because I want to lose weight, I'm at a calorie deficit because it's of course scientifically backed, everybody that loves the science stuff, that it's all about energy balance. In order to lose weight, there needs to be a deficit. In order to gain weight, there needs to be a surplus. And yes, there's of course more to it than that, but as a person trying to lose weight, I always make sure that my calorie intake for that day allows me to be at a calorie deficit so that I can lose weight and burn some of my stored body fat. Now, in order to be able to eat more and have more of a cushion for my nutrition habits, I need to exercise. And I do, of course, do a lot of cardio in the mornings and we'll discuss my workouts and stuff at a later time. But in order to eat more, I have to exercise more. So if I get my workouts in, get a lot of exercise, I of course have more room in order to eat a little bit more on those days that I'm hungrier. But those days, those off days, those rest days, or days when I'm really busy, I don't get to do much exercise, I therefore need to eat fewer calories, consume less calories in order to still maintain that deficit. If you maintain more of a fitness centered mindset, it's very common for people to think, especially right after they worked out, they think that, hey, they deserve this meal or they deserve their little cheat item or whatever because they worked out that they think they can eat a little bit more. Well, it's very, very, very common for people to overestimate the amount of calories they burn each day and especially after exercise and underestimate if they're not tracking it or anything like that, the amount of calories they consume. If you're overestimating the calories you burn off and underestimating the calories that you are taking in, if you're trying to lose weight, that is a very, very bad spot to be in because you'll be thinking that you're doing everything right, but because you're not nutritionally focused, it's just not gonna happen. You're not gonna be able to achieve your goal. All right, so here's another point to get you thinking. Managing calories is very similar in theory to managing money. Now, I am in no spot to start talking about making all kinds of money, but for the income that we do make as YouTube creators, I'm able to go and see a lot of awesome sites go to a lot of really cool places, meet so many people, and do some awesome things. And that's without really taking on any debt. Yes, I had to do 
get some student loans in order to go back to school. But regarding the travel and everything, everything is pretty much taken care of because I manage my income versus expenses properly just as when I am trying to lose weight, I manage my calorie intake versus my calorie outtake properly as well. We get a lot of comments on our videos, especially towards the end of our very long trips where I'm very big and wearing shirts that says I live to eat. We get a lot of comments from people claiming that I've either quit lifting or they ask why I did quit lifting or, or whatnot. In addition to all the fatless comments and funny stuff like that, they're basically poking fun that I don't lift anymore or exercise and it of course is showing around my waist and everywhere else. The thought processes behind that are similar to regarding money. Basically the people that make all this money, the celebrities, the athletes, the people with this massive income, the people that still go broke, well they do that because they didn't manage their expenses properly. To an extent, yes of course there's unexpected stuff, but regarding most of your expenses, a lot of those are controlled. You can't always control your income, uh, it's based on of course education and many other things, but to an extent you can control your expenses and those people that go broke even though they make all kinds of money, they obviously didn't manage their expenses properly. So those are along the same lines thinking that as wondering if I quit working out because uh, like I said earlier, the primary thing is my food. That's what is controlled. Because we're traveling so much, I'm not able to exercise as much as I'd like to, but even if I did exercise a ton, because I'm eating thousands and thousands of calories each and every day, it still would not be able to account for, all that exercise would not account for my calorie intake during those trips. Now with that said, that was not a rant, I was just saying that's how it is. My trips are ridiculous and yes, I do plan them 100%. I take care of everything. There's not really anybody else involved, but I am not complaining about my weight or anything like that. When I went on the trip, I knew that was gonna happen. I brought jeans and clothes accordingly. Yes, the shirts don't always fit as well as I wish they did towards the end. But when I get home from those trips, I make sure to get back to it, work out seven to 10 times a week, which we'll talk about at a different time. But I still make sure to focus mostly on the nutrition. Now, one more thing about money, you know that if you want to save and keep $10,000, because at the end of the day, it's about the money you keep, not always about how much you make. If you want to keep $10,000, but you want to go party, live this luxurious lifestyle, have all these sins of the flesh, well, if that costs $90,000 and you still want to keep that 10, you had to make $100,000 in order to make that work. Now, say for example, somebody who isn't into all that, they've got more of a simple life and they want to keep 10,000, well, they obviously didn't need to have a $100,000 income. So they could have just lived off of 10,000 and made 20,000, which of course makes their life much more simple. Now, regarding nutrition and working out, yes, if you want to eat like a complete idiot, but still achieve your goals and not like an idiot, but eat a ridiculous amount and not really have too much self-control, you're gonna have to do a hell of a lot of working out. Now on the other hand, let's say you do control your calorie intake pretty well, keep it monitored and keep it light, well, in order to lose weight or achieve your goals, you don't need to do that much exercise in order to still achieve that goal that you do have. It all goes back to fitness is recommended, nutrition is required. Yes, it's definitely recommended that you get ample amount of exercise, keep your body active and healthy, but it all goes back, nutrition is required. Just with money, if you don't wanna go bankrupt, you have gotta control your expenses based on your income. With your eating and your exercise and everything, you have gotta control your calorie intake 
based on your typical activity level so that you can still achieve your goals. All right, so point number three, this absolutely never gets discussed, and I thought about doing a completely separate video, but it hasn't really been a big deal this past January. Everybody knows that in the beginning of the year, there's all kinds of New Year's resolutioners, and along with that, there's all kinds of lifters and exercisers complaining not so many this year from what I noticed on Facebook and everything, but a lot of people do complain about all those New Year's resolutioners filling up the gym and making everything inconvenient for them. Well, as science says, most of the time you're complaining about something, it in reality is related to something else. You can go check all that out yourself. Many people preach that. Well, I have made a lot of observations over these past few years, and in reality, the people that do complain and just bitch about everything related to these New Year's resolutioners filling up the gym. The reason that they're upset is because those people that got into the gym trying to do their New Year's resolutions, yes, they are trying for like a month and most of them will quit. Then they'll go back to their old life. Well, they are going to stay in the gym and because they don't understand proper nutrition fundamental practices and they focus way too much on working out, their body is going to pretty much look the damn exact same the next year even though they spent all that time in the gym because they didn't manage their calories properly. In reality, yes on the surface they're complaining about those people taking up space at their gym, but remember the people that actually know what they're doing they're not even affected because they're usually at the gym at different times anyway and they don't really have to deal with those prime time, everyone working out at the same time can't get to their equipment. So yes, they are on the surface complaining about those New Year's resolutioners taking up their spot, but what's really provoking that anger and that outburst is the fact that they are not able to accomplish their goals and they don't really understand the root problem, which is their lack of experience and knowledge about nutrition. So. Those are the three things I wanted to talk about in this video, all related to I Lift to Eat. So hopefully it helped you get your mind thinking about your own physique goals and everything you're doing related to your nutrition and fitness habits. Remember, fitness is recommended, nutrition is required. So thank you to everyone who has watched this video. Be sure if you do believe in this and you like to lift, be sure to check out our store. Everything is foodchallengestore.com. There's links in the description. And until my next video, this is Randy Santel, Atlas with Atlas and Zeus Promotions, and proud owner of foodchallenges.com. No matter what you do, always be sure beforehand to win before you begin. Thanks for watching.